Hey folks, welcome back to Heel Toe Corner Club. I'm Marcus DiSabella, president of Heel Toe Automotive, an online resource for parts and advice for Honda and Acura enthusiasts worldwide. I've been selling parts online for more than 20 years, and I started this podcast to bring a little bit more information to you Honda and Acura enthusiasts to help you sift through all the information out there on the internet that may be conflicting or confusing or just really getting in the way of you taking taking the plunge, pulling the trigger, and buying some parts and having some fun with your car. There's a lot of people in the world, and they have a lot of opinions, and a lot of them aren't right, and a lot of them are right. And how do you know which is which? Who really knows? But I am here just bringing my knowledge and experience in this industry uh, to you to help you kind of sift through some of that. So here we are, digging in. Uh, to a topic that has been something of a, you know, it's been somewhat of a, I don't know, some kind of a peeve for me for a very, very long time. Uh, and it has to do with exhaust diameter selection when you're making an exhaust system for a car. Exhaust diameter is something that seems like a given, right? You're going to put larger piping in an aftermarket exhaust than the factory exhaust because that's the whole point. More flow. Um, higher flowing mufflers, deleting resonators, whatever it is you're doing, you're, uh, you're most likely putting larger piping on, and that's giving your car more performance. Um, but more isn't necessarily better in the grand scheme of things, and that's just never really true. There's actually a good or right or best size for most situations, and a lot of times folks don't really subscribe to that. They just sort of think that you know, if one is one size and the other one's a bigger size, then the bigger size one should be better, right? Like, or if I plan on doing my upgrades to support a really big exhaust system, then I need the bigger one. Well, that's not really true, and it's not really practical. There's other things to take into account, and we're going to talk about some of those today. Uh, but before we do, I want to give a little background and qualify myself to talk about exhaust system design and why I'm a reasonable person to listen to on this topic rather than some talking head on Facebook or something. Um, I started in this industry working at Honda dealers, and as an enthusiast, I fixed up my cars here and there. I've, I've put exhaust systems through muffler shops or whatever on different cars. But one day, I actually uh, had an opportunity to get a job at an exhaust manufacturing company. I worked at Magnaflow Exhaust uh, in 2001. I worked there for about a year. I started off in their sales department and moved up into the R&D department where I handled scheduling in their brand new R&D facility. They called it the Tech Center back in the day, but they, made, they got a whole new building and developed uh, exhaust systems in that building. And I was a guy that uh, helped get cars in and helped discuss with people if they liked the exhaust systems or not after we made it, just to kind of like get some data points so we can think about how we were going to carry through designing exhaust systems. Um, but I don't want to gloss over the fact that I was in sales for a while, and one of the things that we were doing in sales was talking to people on the phone. This was way back when magazines were still the number one place to get information. The internet was a place to go for inf information, but it wasn't like the place. The place was like catalogs and magazines and things like that. Um, so we'd have people calling up asking for exhaust systems for their pickup or their Honda or you know whatever whatever vehicle they had. We would help consult them and help them find the right exhaust system and disseminate the Magnaflow way of like doing exhaust system to these people. Um, graduating up through the tech center and then finally getting to a place where I realized that I wanted to go to school. I hadn't graduated college at that time. I hadn't really attended much college at that time. But I found basically working at Magnaflow uh, a career path that I was really into, which had to do with manufacturing. So I went to school for manufacturing. I left Magnaflow. And believe it or not, I ended up back there some five, six years later working in 2007 uh, in their manufacturing department. I got a job overseeing and analyzing their mag uh, uh, robotic welding cells. They had these cool robots that would you know, robotically weld the exhaust systems and catalytic converters and things like that. 
and there were some efficiency improvements to be made and I got a job there working in that area. So not so much to do with exhaust design, but I have some experience in the exhaust industry that I would say is more than your average person. Uh, I did end up leaving Magnaflow again and all throughout this whole time I'd been running heel toe and one of the things that I had done some short while after that, I think it was somewhere around 2010, I was able to, you know, I'd been selling exhaust systems all the whole while at, at uh, in on heel toe, but what I ended up doing later on was taking over the ATLP exhaust brand. Now there's a whole story behind that. There's another podcast about that. Um, so you can listen to that there. I'm not going to get into it all that much in this podcast because it kind of takes away from the topic. Bottom line is I worked for a top tier exhaust manufacturer. I've been selling exhaust systems for a very long time for Hondas. I've been installing them for a very long time, you know, since the late nineties. And I actually own an exhaust brand where I'm not physically making the parts, but I do help come up with the design features and the reasoning behind why we make our exhausts the way that we do. Um, so that gets you caught up to right now. And the exhaust system in question that's really sort of sparked this podcast is the one that we make for the 2021 and up Acura TLX Type S. I have videos on YouTube where, you know, we got one of the early release TLXs. We got the first one our dealer had. And one of the first things I did was throw it up in the air measure the exhaust system and analyze that, see where the opportunities for an ATLP exhaust would be. And, you know, you'll see in that video that we were able to measure the system. There are multiple different diameters used throughout. There's like a main collector. It splits off into two pipes that are, I don't know, like two inches or something like that, or just a hair bigger. And then there's a couple of areas where it necks down below two inches and then the tail pipes are somewhere around two inches. So it's like basically a dual two and two inch system, you know, but like neck down here and there and then going through the OEM mufflers, no resonators. So it seems on the face like it's a pretty decent exhaust system. Although I think most of us look under underneath there and say that there's some opportunity for improvement because, you know, the piping is going up, going down. It's a little bit smaller than we probably want it to be. Uh, so there we go, set out to make the exhaust, right? And we had a choice. What size piping are we going to use? Well, the factory, you know, converter is somewhere around three inches. It didn't really make any sense to make that any larger than it was. And looking at the, at the horsepower available in that TLX, it's 355 from the crank uh, as far as the factory spec is concerned. Now, whether or not it's actually that or more, we didn't test to see the actual output, but anywhere in that 300 to 400 range, three inch seems pretty reasonable. Uh, when you're talking about a turbocharged engine, yeah, it makes sense to go bigger, but at that time we had already known that um, other companies like PRL had already looked at the car, decided they were gonna pass on a downpipe. They couldn't see a performance increase potential of making it any bigger than it was. If you're not gonna put a bigger turbo on or put a, a lot more boost, there really isn't a whole lot of need for something a lot bigger than that. So, you know, knowing that and feeling like we just wanted to make an exhaust system that was going to be a great OE replacement, something as a, a good bolt on system that was going to support a factory power car, give it a little bit more juice, um, make it sound better, make it look better, all these things that an exhaust system is supposed to do for us. We, um, we decided to go with a dual two and a quarter inch system. Now, uh, we carried that through all the same size mandrel bent piping all the way to the back uh, muffler boxes, which uh, the design of those, not really the topic of, of this podcast, but we had an opportunity to do a, a really neat dual pass system using the factory electronic active um, controller system in the car. So I could talk about that in a different episode, but really what I'm talking about today is the piping. So we came out with the piping is dual two and a quarter. And, you know, people, I think, you know, if you watch the video that we did, I mean, we got a lot of videos up. I did a feature video where we talked about the sizing, why we picked that sizing and why it was appropriate. Um, one of the things you need to keep in mind is that it's a dual system, like it's dual all the way back. So if you actually take the cross-sectional area, the, the flow capability 
of dual two and a quarter exceeds that of a three inch pipe. It's more like a three and a half inch pipe. So it'd be kind of like doing a single three and a half inch. But uh, one of the advantages you have by having a dual is because the pipes are smaller, the flow is split up between two, but the smaller pipe will actually flow uh, air through in a more with more velocity. It'll go through quicker versus a, a larger pipe, which there has to be a little bit more force behind to push through the uh, the larger cross-sectional area. So it's a, it's a good exhaust design, and it two and a quarter felt like it was a really good size to go with, you know, especially all things considered. It was going to be notably larger than the complete system, number one. Number two, we wanted to make sure that we were able to maintain some kind of a, a a reasonable sound profile. We didn't want any drone. We wanted it to sound good, but we didn't want it to sound like noisy or echoey. You know, sometimes when you make the pipe bigger, you kind of get this um, really hollow kind of sound. It doesn't sound bad, but it's not a very refined sound. It's just sort of like a bigger sound. And in tuning the sound of an exhaust system, the piping size is, is a factor. Uh, up to and including, you know, we went to three different um, back box designs by changing around the actual internal diameter of some of the piping that's inside there. And sometimes bigger works better and sometimes smaller works better for generating the right sound, keeping the drone to a minimum, and maintaining performance. I think the number one thing to take away from the whole thing is, is that when you're selecting the exhaust pipe, just going bigger, like the function work exhaust for the same car is dual two and a half, it kind of makes sense, and, I'm, and I feel like on a dyno, it probably does generate a little more power. I haven't heard it personally, um, but my anticipation is that it's probably got a more aggressive sound. Um, I've heard that it doesn't drone, although I'm having a hard time believing it. So we'll see, right? I'm not passing judgment, but uh, I just sort of know the way that we designed our exhaust system that it was going to end up sounding and performing really well. The car um, feels faster. We get more of the pops in between shifts, which people are, you know, totally about that. And, um, yeah, ultimately, there's nothing wrong with having uh, a choice to make an exhaust a little bit smaller. I think that the two and a half inch dual is really rather aggressive. It, it, especially for the types of modifications that are available for that specific car, which is the other thing you have to kind of consider. Like, what are we actually building the exhaust system for? If I'm trying to make, like, the most flow, we're going to be doing a turbo upgrade, we're going to be calibrating, you know, 50% more boost or something like that, you absolutely want larger larger piping size. And I think 2.5 is in a dual on that car would be totally appropriate. But at the time of release, um, yeah, to be honest, there was, like, no tuning available. And even the, when the tuning came out, we're boost limited by the factory computer, which means there's not even any sense in changing a turbo. You can't even uh, raise the boost if with a different turbo. And even if we were able to raise the boost that high or put a different turbo, there's no support for adding fuel. Like we're limited by the factory fuel system. So now if we look at like the Civic Type R, for example, that car has a ton more support. They've got a lot more capability with the computer. They've got um, an ability to swap out turbos, bigger downpipes, bigger exhaust, um, fuel system upgrades. I mean, it is not uncommon to see 400 wheel horsepower in a Civic Type R with, you know, basically off the shelf upgrades on a factory engine. I, you want to start at a three inch exhaust there, probably could support even more than that. So, you know, you kind of got to look at the ultimate horsepower figure of what you're targeting to know the sizing that you're going to do. Why is the horsepower figure important? Because it's directly correlated to how much air is passing through the engine. Air mixes with fuel creates that power. Well, the amount of volatile um, fuel available, the, the volatility of the exhaust or of the gasoline combined with your ability to ignite that um, with a given amount of air, which is coming from the engine size, like it's a known commodity how much air needs to be flowing through a system in order to support an exhaust size. So, you know, we made the call and I feel like it was still a really rather good call today to say like, well, there's only so much power available out of this vehicle and there's no sense in making an oversized exhaust system that's really just going to provide the false hope that you're really getting more power 
and that there's that much more potential there. At such time when they crack the computer, can raise the boost limit, we're seeing like turbo swaps and things like that, I can definitely see making a larger exhaust system for the TLX, just like what we did for the third gen TL. So the ATLP exhaust for the third gen TL is a two and a half inch system, which is you know notably larger than the factory system. The factory system, I don't know what the size, I believe it may be just a shade under two and a quarter or right around there. But it's a single system. It comes back off the third converter and back to a Y pipe in the back to dual muffler canisters. And it definitely made sense to go two and a half and dual two and a quarters. There's tons of flow in that system for, you know, basically a, a box stock TL type S uh, or with other bolt ons and things like that. The car doesn't need more than a two and a half inch exhaust. And we ran with that for probably eight years or so. Well, you know, people supercharge. People are putting, you know, stroked engines in. People are putting bigger, more powerful engines in there. And then it's like, okay, well, now we should look at doing a three-inch system. So sometime down the line, when the development supported it, we developed a three-inch exhaust for the third-generation TL. And it does make more power than a two-and-a-half. On a tuned TL, it, you know, you're looking at like an extra eight or ten horsepower just by going up a half an inch on the catback. So it makes sense. It makes sense at a certain point. But as long as, uh, you know, the car doesn't support it, it doesn't make sense. It's just, it's just making something bigger. And as much as I would love to appease, you know, people, just like all the way back to, you know, those Magnaflow days, we'd get the guys with the, you know, the five liter Silverado and they wanted dual three inch. Some of these dudes wanted dual three inch on an engine that was only making like 200 horsepower, you know? It's like made no sense. Dual two and a half doesn't make any sense. But nobody wants a dual two inch exhaust, even if that's the appropriate one to have. So, you know, it's kind of like this weird dichotomy of we want to do what's best for our cars. And we think that we know what the right thing to do for it is. But at the end of the day, unless you have the knowledge and experience to know what actually is the best thing, you don't really have ground to stand on. You know, I'll talk people out of a three inch system if they have basically just got bolt-ons and stuff it just, that doesn't make any sense to put a three inch on unless you're really you know going to go that next step in a performance category so anyway that's really what i wanted to say i wanted to get it out there and say like there's a reason for picking an exhaust size in an exhaust system and the reason isn't bigger is better you know, in general, yeah, I would say bigger than the factory is better, but bigger than bigger isn't better. And if you have two choices of exhaust systems in front of you, and one of them is two and a half, and one is two and three quarters, and one is three inch, there's a right one for you. And probably what makes a little bit more sense is to pay attention to what's going to look and sound the best to you. Because ultimately, you know, and then keep in mind, like how far are you planning on upgrading this car? Because going bigger and bigger, bigger, the, the a smaller exhaust will handle the flow just fine it's just going to move quicker a bigger exhaust is going to handle the flow but you know actually more pressure is required to to push air through a bigger pipe it's going to move slower and you need more back pressure in order to expel the gas out of the engine you know there is a point at which you're going to go too big and it's just not really going to be helping you any further um so there you go. Uh, I'm sure there's exceptions. You know, a lot of people might say turbocharge application. It's impossible to go too big. I've heard this before too, but we're talking about street cars and we're not talking about bleeding edge performance or like maximum performance or track performance. We're talking about an upgraded exhaust system on a street car. What it, what it actually is. Let's be sensible, you know, listen to professionals and, you know, people bumping around on Instagram, just passing judgment on things. It's not often, it's not often coming from a place of experience or actual knowledge. You know, they don't have your best interest at art, just like we would do at Heel Toe. And that's where I'll end it. Um, Heel Toe's in your corner, and that means that we're here to provide you good information to make your upgrading dollars go the farthest to make you happiest. Have a really great day, and let us know what you think about this topic or anything else in the comments section. Bye now.